Okay, this is to show you how to handle uh, seesaw problems or torque balance problems, if you will. And I've already drawn a picture for you here. This represents a seesaw, and this uh, bar of length L here is uniform in that the mass is distributed uniformly in the uh, bar. So its center of mass is in the middle, and it could be balanced on this pivot right here. I'm denoting the mass of the bar as m sub b, and I put a little mass on one end right here. I'll denote that as little m, and big m, a heavier mass out here at some distance x1 from the center, where little m is the distance x2 from the center. And just an example of what kind of problem you might expect with something like this <clears throat> would be, let's say, given everything except little m, what is the little mass? Let's say that, uh, for example, big M is equal to, say, 12 kilograms. And let's say that, uh, uh, let's say that L is equal to 12 meters. And let's say that x1 is equal to 2 meters, and x2 is equal to 6 meters, since that's half of the total length L, which is 12. And the question is, uh, well, let's say that uh, the mass of, of the board, or the seesaw, is uh, 5 kilograms, let's say. So what we want to know is, what is little m? That's what we're looking for. And there's a couple of different ways to approach this problem. But first of all, we have to say that it's in equilibrium, which means that all of the forces acting downward are equal to all of the forces acting upward. And all of the torques that tend to make this object rotate in the clockwise direction equal to all of the torques that tend to make it rotate in the opposite direction. So let's take a look at that and draw on the picture what some of these uh, forces and torques are. And first of all, one force is the force of the little mass acting in this direction, and that's just mg, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, the Big mass M has a force acting in this direction also, and that's big M times G. And I'm not trying to make them actually represent the value of the forces. These are just representative arrows showing the direction of the force. Also, the weight of the board, or the, the long board, is just a force in this direction, which is m sub b times g and then of course there is the force upward this direction here this force let's call that f sub b and that represents the uh, upward force of the pivot so from this information I can write down the torque balance equation. I already know that the forces are balanced. And what I'm trying to find is this mass little m. So I need an equation that will involve little m so that I can solve for it. The easiest way to do this is to pick a point like the pivot point right here and calculate the torques about this point. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first technique, number one, is to pick the pivot, pick the pivot point, and calculate the torques. Okay, so let's say, what are the clockwise torques? Clockwise torques. The things that are making this thing rotate clockwise, <clears throat> really there's only one, and that's the torque due to the little mass. So I can write that the force, m, g, times the distance x2 
is equal to a clockwise torque. And there's nothing else trying to make it go clockwise. And the counterclockwise torques, which this has to be equal to, can be written on the other side of the equation. Counterclockwise torques are, well, again, the board is not exerting any torque since it's acting at this point. But this mass is trying to make the whole thing rotate counterclockwise. So that's equal to big MG times X1. And there I have it right there. So if I solve this equation for little m, I'll have what I'm looking for. There's a g on both sides. I can cancel that out. If I divide both sides by x2, that gives me that little m is equal to big M times x1 divided by x2. And that is how I calculate what m is if I know what these other things are. If I plug some numbers in there, big M is 12 kilograms, x1 is equal to 2 meters, and x2 is equal to 6 meters, so this is equal to 4 kilograms, since that's 6 goes into 12 2 times, so 2 times 2 is 4. 4 kilograms is what M is. And just to show you how this works, it doesn't really matter which point I choose to calculate this torque balance equation. So I'm going to pick a different point just to show you that it's it makes the algebra a little more complicated, but you can get the same answer picking any other point and calculating the torques about that point. So let's pick, let's say, for the second example, now let's pick the point located at mass big M. So I'm going to calculate torques about this point. I'm going to have to move the paper up, so let me do that. Okay, so picking this point as being the point where I'm going to calculate my torques, uh, the clockwise torques, let's see about this point, let's see the clockwise torques. There's this torque, which is due to the mass of the board. This is the mass of the board times g, and the distance it acts from this point is x1, so that's the first one, and I can write that as m sub e g times x1, and then also trying to move this thing to in the clockwise direction uh, about this point is just little m times this whole distance right here and I'm going to write that as x1 plus x2 so plus little m g times x1 plus x2 those are the clockwise torques and that has to be equal to the counterclockwise torques so let's look at the counterclockwise torques. Well, there's really only one about this point, and that's the force F sub B times this distance X1. So this is equal to F B times X1. So I have an equation right here that I need to solve for little m, but I'm not quite done because I don't really know what F B is. But oh yes, I do because Fb is just equal to the total weight of these objects pushing down this way. Fb is the force exerted by the pivot upward, and that's equal to the mass of the board, mass of the board plus big M plus little m times g. So that means I can write this as m sub b g x1 plus, I'm going to distribute this, m sub g or m g x1 plus m g x2, and that's equal to x1 times this stuff. So I'm going to write that as x1 times g times 
M sub B plus big M plus little m like that. And I'll just go ahead and distribute this and write this as m sub b times g times x1 from that term plus big M g times x1 from that term plus one more which is just little m times g times x1. <clears throat> if I look at this, I have some equal terms on each side of the equal sign. So I have, I have an m sub b g x1 here and an m sub b g x1 here. So those cancel each other out. And let's see, I have an m g x1 on each side so I can cancel that out and I'm left with an MGX2 on this side and a big MGX1 on this side so I'll write that as MGX2 is equal to big MG times X1 the G's cancel out and I'm left with M is equal to big M X1 over X2. And that's the same thing we got using the other technique. And just to make my point, it doesn't matter which point I pick to do my torque balance equation. I could pick this point down here, and then the clockwise torques would be this one, and this one, and this one, and the counterclockwise torque would be this force times this distance right here. I could write an equation for that and solve it, and I get exactly the same thing. And I'll just leave that as an exercise for you to do.